Welcome to the Love Your Story podcast. Yay! Today is our first quick chat. That's one inspirational thought in 15 minutes or less. So let's chat. I am starting the 15 minute timer to make sure I keep to this. So we've got a real 15 minutes. One of the beautiful redemptive aspects of living is the possibility to take something broken and discarded and create something beautiful from it. That's what I want to talk about today. This is such a hopeful, wonderful, creative space to understand. It's like this really simple perspective, but such an uplifting way to evaluate the wonderful evolution and the art of living. So stay tuned for a quick uplifting chat about this idea of making something beautiful from the broken and discarded stuff of life. Stories are our lives in language. Welcome to the Love Your Story podcast. I'm Lori Lee, and I'm excited for our future together of telling stories, evaluating our own stories, and lifting ourselves and others to greater places because of our control over our stories. This podcast is about empowerment and giving you, the listener, ideas to work with in making your stories work for you. Story power serves you best when you know how to use it. I have always loved thrift shopping. I think it started because I've carefully budgeted everything through my whole life. And because of that important budgeting, I also love a bargain. (laughs) So I have no serious problem sharing clothes that have been worn by someone else. You just wash them, not uptight about stuff like that. And I have found wonderful treasures, unexpected booty every summer at yard sales, right? Every year, I find the woman who is retiring all her craft supplies. And I buy everything from ribbon to tiny brads to unopened packages of name brand cardstock. Sometimes I find perfectly cellophane wrapped embellishments that are in perfect condition and are a perfect addition to my card making supplies. I make handcrafted cards. So I take these discarded supplies that these people no longer want and I take them and I make beautiful handmade cards that I then send all over the country. I sell them, I trade them, and you know what? It's a creative outlet for me. So big win-win here. I dare say also that half of the holiday accoutrement for my home has been purchased from women who set up tables in their yards to find new homes for the things they were tired of. You know, make a buck doing it, the yard sale. This type of sharing, of recycling, it feels fun and woven with hope that you'll find the perfect treasure for pennies on the dollar. In this way, we use and we reuse. We enjoy an item while it's with us, and then we set it free to continue its life in a fresh new space with someone else who will love the novelty of seeing it anew. This discarded, finding new life through new eyes. Well, my first dog was a black, curly, eight-pound miniature poodle. I'll say my first dog as an adult. My ex-husband's sister had somehow ended up with a brother and a sister puppy, and The little miss had been pushed around by the brother who was just a little bit bigger than her. And my ex-husband's sister also had four little boys in the family and they had been thriving on teasing the puppies and roughhousing. And Molly Dog, that was the little miss, she wasn't doing very well. So on a weekend when my boys were with their dad, I get this phone call from them. You know where this is going, right? (laughs) Can we bring home a dog? It's really nice and little and I promise we'll take care of it just for a few days. I told them, absolutely not. I wasn't going to deal with puppy puddles and shedding in my house. Never. I drew a hard line. They continued their plight. She doesn't shed. She's been potty trained. She comes with her own kennel and her own dog dish. And she's had all her shots. Please, mom, just for a couple of days while Tina and Doug are in town. Well, (laughs) I allowed this with the agreement that... The dog would stay in the garage at nights and that she could only stay for the two days while Tina and Doug were in town. From the day she entered that front door until she died years later, she rarely, if ever, left my side. She was always afraid of other dogs and of people, but I was her person. And what an honor that was. The something beautiful that came from this bullied puppy 
failing to thrive in her current home, was a love of my life. We made a beautiful life together, and as is often the case with dogs, we think we are giving them a home, but they become the home for our hearts. Something very beautiful came from the broken. My own life wasn't so different from these spaces of working with the broken and the discarded to create something better, even infinitely more precious. After three marriages and three divorces, broken is a word I understand. Broken heart, broken home, broken dreams. These are words we hear all the time, but each one of them is loaded with heavy burdens and crippling dark days. There's lots to those stories. And I think it's fair to say that we all know the word broken because life is always full of unexpected challenges for everyone. Everyone has those dark nights of the soul. But here's what I found. Years later, and with focus, I built something better on the ashes of those relationships. I built a woman who knows she can get through hard things. I built a heart that I know survives. I built a home of safety and love for my children and myself. I built a life with stories shifted to consider the things I'd learned rather than a story that was stuck in the he did me wrong phase and the victimhood. So on the ashes of a life torn down over and over, I kept rebuilding. That's not to say that I haven't had to take down and (laughs) rebuild to get it right, or that making it beautiful isn't an ongoing process. Of course it is. That's the way of it. When I walked with my best friend Molly Dog and she sprang through the green grasses of the park, while I looked at the beautiful mountains that surrounded my home and watched the seasons change day after day, month after month, we built something beautiful. When I comb through a thrift shop or a yard sale, finding those things that I can use to make my home beautiful or that I can transform into handmade cards that share love, I take the thing that someone else discards and create something beautiful with a little effort, a little vision, and some heart. Making something beautiful from the broken, discarded stuff of life is what we do. It's a bit of alchemy, which is a really cool idea. It's the power of love and vision, and hope, and transformation. That is my thought today, people. Thank you for listening today to my quick chat. What beauty are you creating from the broken and discarded stuff that you are finding in life? Think about that because it's a neat thing to think about. We'll see you in two weeks for the next episode of the Love Your Story podcast. Join me for another great interview, another great story, And you will find all the episodes on loveyourstorypodcast.com. Please share this episode with anyone that you think it will uplift just a little bit. We'll see you in two weeks.